order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? As we express our gratitude this Thanksgiving, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we'll move on to the roll call. There are 12 present. Okay, Alderperson Donahue is attending remotely, and Alderpersons Damro, Schneider, Bitters, and Trester are excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to mayor's appointments. City attorney. Uh, 1.4 is a, uh, an appointment uh, by the mayor, submitting the following appointment for your consideration. Greg Sider to be considered for appointment to the Board of License Examiners as the second alternate according to General Ordinance 1917-18. That will lie over. 1.5 is an appointment uh, from the mayor uh, submitting the following appointments for your consideration. Jody Kramer to be considered for appointment to the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet representing the Memorial Neighborhood Association as the primary member, term to expire April 30th, 2018. Nancy Maring to be considered for appointment to the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet representing the Memorial Neighborhood Association as the alternate member, term to expire April 30th, 2018. That will also lie over till our next meeting. Next, we'll move on to election of a Board of Water Commissioner. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I move uh, that nominations uh, be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot. And if more than two candidates are nominated, uh, the candidate with the lowest number of votes uh, be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives the majority. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Nominations are open. Alderperson Wolf. I nominate uh, Mark Schmidt for the position of Board of Waterworks Commissioner. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion. Um, Mark Schmidt is with us tonight. Mark, I'd like to invite you to come up to the podium and uh, say a few words and give us a chance to get to know you a little bit. Mr. Mayor, Daryl, council members, citizens of Sheboygan, thank you for considering my nomination to the Board of Water Commissioners. I appreciate that very much. You can tell by my shirt that I'm an Alliant Energy employee. One thing I would like to say right off the bat is I will be very cognizant of any potential conflicts of interest. And um, with that, I'd like to invite any questions you may have. Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Mark. <clears throat> Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I move to close the nominations and direct uh, the city clerk to cast the unanimous uh, ballot for Mark, Sch Mark Schmidt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations, Mark. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move on uh, to a presentation. The Wisconsin Director and Deputy Director of AARP will present the City of Sheboygan with a certificate to acknowledge our age-friendly community status. Sam Wilson, would you please come forward? Thank you, Sam. The floor is yours. Good evening, Mayor Vandersteen and, and City Administrator Hofflin and members of the Sheboygan Common Council. My name is Sam Wilson, and I am the State Director <coughs> for AARP in Wisconsin, an organization with 845,000 plus members in the state of Wisconsin and 38 million members nationwide. Tonight, it's my pleasure to bring you good news. And it is my honor to join all of you this evening to announce Sheboygan's entrance into the AARP network of age-friendly communities. There are a lot of people who are deserving of recognition this evening for their efforts to make this happen. I want to thank Mayor Mike Vandersteen and City Administrator Daryl Hofflin for their leadership.
in recognizing the importance of this work for the residents of this community. I also want to thank Nancy Maring and Wendy Schmitz, who played an important role in getting Sheboygan up and over the first hurdles of entry into the network. When you combine both a passion for a community with a desire to be a leader in the state in this work, Sheboygan's entrance into the AERP network of age-friendly communities became what we might call in very technical terms a no-brainer. I also want to make special mention of Mary Ann Mutzi on the AERP Wisconsin staff who has led a considerable amount of the livable community's work in our state. Raise your hand, Mary Ann. Thank you and has been a great ambassador to communities as they work through their own livability journey, regardless of whether or not they make a commitment to join the AERP network of age-friendly communities. Often when we speak to communities looking to join the network, we need to emphasize that membership in the network does not mean that the community is currently age-friendly or even a great place to retire. But what we do emphasize is that membership in the network means that a community's elected leadership has made the commitment to actively work towards making their village, town, city, or county a great place to live for people of all ages. When I look around at what Sheboygan has already initiated and understand more about the history of partnerships and strategic initiatives that precede this evening, it would seem that your community is well positioned to integrate what has already been started into this new age-friendly framework. In fact, what has been most notable is that there is a legacy of leadership that has been intentional in looking not at what has been or where Sheboygan is today, but to challenge the entire community to envision what the next 20, 30, or even 40 years will require of this community to remain relevant to residents today and in the future. You've built public-private partnerships to ensure community buy-in, leveraged appropriate investments in infrastructure, and perhaps, most importantly, empowered the right people to bring it all together. And you've engaged in a process of continual community improvement, which lies at the heart of the work for every member of the age-friendly network. One need only look at the October-November 2016 issue of AARP the magazine that highlighted the 10 best communities to live in for under $40,000 a year to understand that this community has already done a lot of good things already to make the city attractive to folks of all ages. With many communities, I reflect on what membership in the age-friendly network could do to help a community reach their full potential. To be sure, I'm certain that there is much Sheboygan will gain in being a member of the network of age-friendly communities. But I'm also very excited for what the entire network of age-friendly communities will learn from all of you. It's an honor to be here before the City Council to bestow the official designation to Sheboygan as being Wisconsin's third entrant into the AERP network of age-friendly communities. And I congratulate each and every one of you for the hand you had in building the community you have today and for your commitment to creating an even greater community for future generations. Thank you for your leadership and on behalf of AERP and our 850 45,000 members in Wisconsin and over 38 million members nationwide, I thank you for this work. I've also handed out uh, some documents to all of you, uh, which I would like to reference at this time. You should have received a red folder uh, uh, inside the bag that was distributed. If you didn't, Marianne, do you have any, a couple more? I think there are a couple up front that we may be missing. Of the items that I'd like to highlight inside that red folder is the process, the, the AARP Network of Age-Friendly Communities program cycle. Where Sheboygan is today, you'll see, is in step one, entering the network. And it's a document that looks a little bit like this if you're thinking about looking in your folder. You. This is often the hardest, first and hardest, hurdle to get over, but it really is a commitment to developing programs and identifying opportunities that will improve your communities uh, for 
all ages. The second step, which is what Sheboygan will engage in next, is the planning phase. Listening to residents, working with departments within the city and identifying those opportunities that will be um, some of the priorities and goals for the city over the next two to three years. That enters step three, the implementation and evaluation phase, which we see did the new processes and programs and services perhaps that were added actually contribute to the betterment of the community. And step five is uh, the continuous improvements where we evaluate, plan, and implement a second level of priorities. This is the continuous cycle of improvement uh, that I talked about earlier. This is a good framework for all of you to understand that truly tonight is the first step. Becoming a member of the Age-Friendly Network is an important commitment. It's an important message to the community, but it is, uh, again, just the first step in a very long journey to, to uh, understanding what the community needs are today and in the future. I would also highlight something called the Livability Index, which is on the right side of the folder. Uh, for members of the Common Council, for the mayor, for the city administrator, and members of the public that are gathered here today, this is a tool that AERP created so that you can measure down to the neighborhood level the livability of uh, your community. Uh, what I did before I go and do a presentation at any community, I always pop in an address. So I popped in City Hall's address into the livability index that we have and the score uh, for this neighborhood in Sheboygan is a 67 and sometimes people would say 67 that doesn't seem very high. The highest neighborhood in the entire country uh, scores a 79 and indeed Sheboygan this neighborhood in particular rates in the top third of all communities across the country in four measures of livability and in the second third in um, three other measures so Sheboygan as I stated is already a long ways along uh, along the path um, towards this um, age-friendly work that you're starting this evening so with that um, I would leave it to any questions that members of the Common Council may have for me, and um, if not, we'll get to the formal presentation of a plaque. Without that, could I have Wendy Schmitz and Judy Alder Gamont? Alderperson Sorensen. Oh, was oh, there one? I, I, I had a quick question. What were the other cities in Wisconsin that had this designation? Shorewood and Glendale. Okay, thank you. All right, Wendy and Judy, if you'll come up. Ask the millennial to take an A or P picture. <laughs> <laughs> so if you two will hold that together, we'll make sure that you can get a picture of that. But this certificate is the... Uh, Official designation uh, on behalf of AERP of the city of Sheboygan's entrance into the Age Friendly Network. Are you trying to get me in the picture? Okay. Yes, we are. Sorry. <laughs> Put it down just a little bit, covering your face. <laughs> All right, thank you. And Mr. Mayor, I also have a letter here from Nancy Lamont, who's our Chief Advocacy and Engagement Officer, our Executive Vice President for Community, State, and National Affairs, welcoming uh, you into the network of age friendly communities as well. And thank you again, Mr. Mayor, and the Common Council of Sheboygan for the time this evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. We appreciate it. Next, we'll move on to Mayor's announcements. Uh, first of all, we have uh, two guests that are with us tonight. Uh, they're members of our uh, newest neighborhood association, the Memorial Neighborhood Association. Jenny Given is here. She's the president of that group. And Jody Kramer, please stand. Thank you for coming.
We want to remind all of our residents that winter parking residents with parking uh, rules with alternate side parking begins on December 1st. And um, I just also want to let you know that Shoreline Metro, our transit operation, is offering uh, free bus fares on Black Friday, that's 1124, and Small Business Saturday, that's 1125. And they're also going to be offering free parking downtown on Black Friday. So we really want to encourage our residents to try to take advantage and support some of our local merchants in the downtown area. Next one, we'll go on to hearings. There's two hearings tonight. They're both on the same property. Uh, so the first hearing uh, is nine, number nine of 1718, pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices sent by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city's future land use map of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan and to change the use classification of vacant land between North Taylor Drive and North 34th Street from institutional and community facilities to community uh, mixed use. The second hearing on the same property is number 10 of 1718, pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices sent by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city of Sheboygan's official zoning map to change the use district classification of vacant land between North Taylor Drive and North 31st Street from UR Urban Residential to Class SO Suburban Office. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Please step forward. <clears throat> Thanks, Name Mayor. and address. Sorry. Name and address, please. Uh, Dr. Matthew Bistan, 1630 North Taylor Drive. Please proceed. Um, thank you. I'm here today to ask for your support for the rezoning of the land west of my uh, existing building to 34th Street. Um, in 1979, doctors Bob Fighter and Gus DeBoris purchased the land where we are currently relocated. In 1989, they built the facility we currently um, house. Um, I joined the practice in 1998 and have uh, been active in the community since. Um, with those 30 years of serving the community, we uh, needed a, um, we need more space. Um, we're looking to add on. I approached our good neighbor, Ebenezer Church, um, many who are here today in support, uh, to purchase land. They agreed uh, to purchase, uh, to sell me land uh, west of my building, 234th Street, um, with the contingency that we change the designation to uh, suburban office uh, for any future um, uh, building that I might need. In the summer, I. I called our neighbors, had a little meeting together, and let them know what my plans were. Uh, most of the land, 95% of the land that I'm purchasing, I have no plans on building on or doing anything with. Uh, however, I would like to preserve the flavor of the neighborhood, the uh, openness of the land for what we've enjoyed for the last 30 years. Um, during the process of this rezoning, we uh, we, we worked with the staff and came up with some deed restrictions that would not allow uh, building of things, including bars, uh, hotels, et cetera, that is outlined in the uh, proposal as well. These are types of um, businesses that are fine, but for our area, it's not something that I would want, and nor, uh, nor any of our neighbors would. Um, so we worked with the city. We have the we have that uh, in place with the deed restrictions, and I ask for your support. Can I thank take you. questions, or are there any questions? Or no, thank you very much right. for your comments. You. Appreciate. It. You like to speak next, sir? Please come forward. <clears throat> Uh, Charles Teedy, 2425 North 26th Street, Sheboygan. And I'm here as a member of Ebenezer United Church of Christ to support the rezoning request of Dr. Matt Bistan. Uh, 
Altogether, Ebenezer owns 7.7 .7 acres of land between Taylor Drive and 34th Street, south of Salmon Avenue. And we have agreed to sell to Dr. Bistan approximately 2.1 acres of this land at the south end of our property that's contiguous with his. Uh, the sale is contingent on Dr. Bistan receiving the necessary rezoning and other approvals from the city. Ebenezer has owned the land in question for over 50 years when we first located from our previous location across from Jefferson School. Ebenezer is very active in the Sheboygan community. We were recently recognized by the National United Church of Christ as the Church of the Month for our Laundry Love Ministry, which we started here in Sheboygan, where we provide funds and uh, social time for people to do their laundry at a local laundromat who otherwise would not be able to afford to, to do that. Uh, we have been leaders and ra nationally recognized for local refugee resettlement efforts. Our associate pastor, Reverend Lori Stewart, is a chaplain for the Sheboygan Police Department. And we have a ministry that provides support and work opportunities for those able at the Sheboygan County Detention Center. Rainbow Kids and the Sheboygan Quilters currently meet at Ebenezer. We provide space for a foot care clinic and sponsor an annual electronic recycling event. We maintain a relationship with Jefferson School through our Jefferson Ebenezer partnership. We've allowed fresh meals on wheels to use part of our property to grow fresh vegetables. And we provide food to the local food pantries and members of our congregation deliver meals on wheels. However, we are not a wealthy congregation. All of our operating budget and capital improvements are supported by members of our congregation. Uh, we get no support from a higher church uh, authority, and we have no endowment fund. As our identity statement says, in part, we are ordinary people working hard to accomplish extraordinary things. One resource we've identified to enable us to continue our extraordinary ministries is our land. Dr. Bistan's purchase will enable us to continue to be a vital part of the Sheboygan community. Uh, Dr. Bistan spoke to the concerns that the planning department had about potential incompatibility of some uses in the suburban office zone uh, relocation to the uh, relative the adjoining residential neighborhood. Dr. Bistan has agreed to land use deed restrictions that address these concerns and the Planning Commission has recommended approval of the rezoning. We members of United Church uh, of Ebenezer United Church of Christ urge you to approve the rezoning proposal also. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else? Please step forward. <clears throat> Name and address, please. Uh, Alan Miller. I live at 1605 North 33rd Place. I'm right next to uh, the gentleman's property, and I'm worried about the woods, for one thing, on what they're going to do with it. If you say you're not going to do nothing for a while, maybe I won't be around then. But uh, right now, we have a problem with branches from your trees laying over the top of our condos. I've got one that's 30 feet long in my backyard that came from your 100-year-old oak tree, and he went like $600 to cut it down. And there's four more in the next condo to the east of us that there's five bigger branches that they're going to have to be cut down because they're slapping against their roof. And it's really kind of dangerous. Otherwise, I'm happy for you to have the property. It'd be the best thing that ever happened because all it is is a big empty field and you might be able to do something with it. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Are there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The aye. hearing is, is closed. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda, which will include items 3.2 through 3.17. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items that are on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please, please call the roll for passage?
12 ayes. Motion passes. Next is reports of officers. Item 4.1 uh, will be, um, 4.1 through 4.3 will be referred to various committees. Item 4.4 is RO number 227 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 21 of 1718 by all the persons Savaglio and Lewandowski to amend the city's future land use map of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan and to change the land use classification of vacant land between North Taylor Drive and North 31st Street from institutional and community facilities to community mixed use and recommends the approval of the attached substitute ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. I would move to accept and file and pass a substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That's before us for discussion. Seeing no lights, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Eleven ayes, one abstain. Motion passes. Item 4.5 is RO number uh, 230 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission to Humers refer General Ordinance number 22 of 1718 by Alderperson Savaglio and Lewandowski and RO number 192 of 1718 by the City Clerk to amend the City of Sheboygan zoning map to change the use district classification of vacant land between North Taylor Drive and North 31st Street from Class UR urban residential to Class SO suburban office and recommends passing the substitute ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. I would move to accept and file and pass the substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven ayes, one abstain. Motion passes. <clears throat> Item 4.6 4. will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Under resolutions, Item 5.1 is number 94 of resolution number 94 of 1718 by Alderpersons Donahue and Bourne authorizing enter into an agreement for, uh, with Rupert Milkey for final design and bidding documents related to the expansion of the Sheboygan Business Center. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion to suspend and pass the resolution. Okay. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, I'd like to call on Administrator Hufflin for some comments on this resolution. I, I want to take uh, this time uh, to acknowledge that this is the first of many steps uh, that you'll be asked to consider and ultimately approve. Uh, this will occur over the next six weeks prior to the end of the year. Uh, again, I want to extend my appreciation to many department heads and, uh, and their staff for their involvement in getting us to this point. Uh, that includes uh, Finance Department, Nancy Buss, uh, Legal, Chuck Adams, uh, Susan Richards, Clerk, uh, Dave Beeble, uh, Public Works Director, uh, and last but not least, uh, City Development, uh, Chad Pelichek. Uh, he has helped us manage uh, these steps and kept us on track. Uh, again, it takes a, a lot of people having their hands and getting this to you uh, for, your, for your consideration. So I, uh, again, extend my appreciation to staff and look forward to your consideration tonight and over the next six weeks, uh, many agenda items. Thank you very much. Under further discussion, Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. Could you please expand the, or explain the need to suspend the rules for this? Please go ahead. Uh, this is on your agenda. Uh, the, there's a lot of work that Rupert Milkey uh, needs to uh, perform over the next two and a half months. Uh, the goal for the city is to get this out for bid uh, prior to when a lot of bids are will be uh, available to the public uh, associated with Foxconn. Uh, so the hope is that we're in a bidding uh, motion or process prior to other major uh, developments that will occur on the state around the state. We may be in competition with some of those vendors. Uh, so uh, the sooner we activate uh, the contract, uh, the greater the chance, uh, chances that we will, in fact, will be in that position to get favorable bids. Thank you. 
Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Well, Motion passes. Item 5.2 is resolution number 95 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing signing a document releasing the cooperation agreement for conveyance and private development of land with regard to phase one of the Portscape Apartments on South Pier while maintaining the provisions in section 12. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend and pass resolution and that I would ask that Chad Palachek come forward to um, explain. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The reason for the suspension on this document is um, Portscape Apartments under the development agreement between the city and the redevelopment authority had the um, clause in there that they could purchase the land within the first 10 years of developing the pro property. Um, in the development agreement, it's had selling the land, those interior parcels on South Pier as a one uh, chunk. <coughs> the redevelopment authority has agreed to sell this first phase, so they're trying to get some permanent financing in place for phase one, the 55 units that are completed today. Um, and they're going to exercise their right to purchase that first phase of property for 150000 The reason for this is they're trying to get this done before December 7th so that they can uh, lock in their rate and be able to close as soon as possible. So they've asked us to release um, them from the developer's agreements provisions um, that are outlined in, in your packet. So the staff had no issues with it, and the redevelopment authority had accepted it as well. Thank you, Chad. Any other discussion? Other person holds you. Yes, I'm wondering if you could tell me of the 55 completed units, how many have been rented? 55 units are all rented. 100%. They're 100% rented? <clears throat> That's correct. They even have some pre-leases on the other units that are being currently built. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve Motion passes. Item 5.3 is resolution number 96 of 1718 by Alder Persons Donahue and Boren approving the purchase of 3.99 acres of land, parcel number 59030-454530, owned by Wisconsin Power and Light on Stahl Road. Alder Person Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. I Under believe, uh, I, I believe, Mayor, this is the one where we want to purchase this property by the end of November and start the annexation process in December. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.4 through 5.8 will be referred to various committees. Uh, 5.9 is resolution number 97 of 1718 by all the persons Donahue and Boren authorizing establishing an appropriation in the 2017 budget for engineering services for the Sheboygan Business Center. All the person Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, make a motion to suspend and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson uh, Bellinger. I, I would just question why we need to suspend the rules for this. Is it the same reason that 
Yes. The Daryl that you gave prior. Yes, it is. Any other discussion? Okay, would the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number 170 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred RO number 206 of 1718 by the Director of Planning and Development requesting support from the Common Council to preserve, at, pursue acquisition of vacant uh, blighted property located at 2117 Indiana Avenue and recommends to accept and adopt Alder person born. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is uh, RC number 171 of 1718 by Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred resolution number 88 of 1718 by all their persons Donahue and Boren to authorize establishing an appropriation in the 2017 budget for grant funds received in the fire department and recommends filing the documents. Alder person Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 173 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee to whom is referred pursuant to RO number 201 of 1718 by the City Clerk submitting various license applications and recommends denying taxicab uh, license application number 1556 for Thomas E. Holtz based upon his record of violations related to the license activity and his record as habitual law offender. Alderperson Holshu. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, please proceed. <coughs> Is Thomas Holtz here? He does not appear to be here. Um, the committee met. We had the hearing. Based on the testimony that we heard, um, this committee decided to deny this license. Thank you very much for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is RC number 166 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee. To whom is referred RO number 187 of 1718 by the City Clerk, submitting various license application and recommends denying taxicab driver license application number 5224, Michael B. Gaumer based upon his record of violations related to the license activity and safety concerns. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Michael Gomer here? I don't see that Michael's here. Um, he was called into our committee and we listened to the testimony and the entire committee voted to deny this license. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve 
12 ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.5 is RC number 174 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee to whom was referred pursuant to RO number 201 of 1718 by the City Clerk. Submitting various licensed applications, recommends denying beverage operators license application number 1920, Brian Bista. Uh, based upon his ineligib ineligibility for a license and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Is Brian Butsta here? Doesn't appear Brian is here, <clears throat> nor was he at our meeting. Um, the consensus of the committee was to deny this license. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 12 ayes. Motion passes. Under ordinances, uh, item 7.1 through 7.4 will be referred to various committees. Under matters laid over, 8.1 is RO number 223 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting a tax levy certification for the 2017-2018 school year from the Sheboygan Area School District. Older Prison Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. <clears throat> Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 8.2 is RO number 190 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission to whom is referred General Ordinance number 14 of 1718 by Alderpersons Born and Sorensen for a petition for direct annexation for property located in the City of Sheboygan, owned by the City of Sheboygan, and recommends passing the substitute ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. Thank you. I'd move to accept and file and pass a substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please. No, it's just so it's a vote. Clerk, please call the roll. Bias. Motion passes. 8.3 is RO number 171 of 1718 by the city administrator submitting a list of the estimated unreserved fund balances at December 31st of 2018 and outstanding debt as of December 31st of 2017 as part of the budget process. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 8.4 is RO number 191 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 20 of 1718 by Alderperson Slavaglio and Lewandowski and RO number 186 of 1718 by the City Clerk to rezone property located at 3530 Lower Falls Road from Class Pre-Planned Unit Development to Class JMKAC Planned Unit Development and recommends passing the ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Chad, would you like to come forward? Just so everybody knows, this is the former Schuchert property, and this is where the Art Center is planning to build the Art Preserve. This is the first stage in that process, so um, after this gets approved, they should be coming forward with their design plans. 
um, and that'll probably be the first time that that's prov uh, given to the public and then looking to start construction on that uh, art preserve viewable structure that they've talked about in early 2018 sometime around February or March so um, we're excited to see that project move forward after a number of years of selling the property to them thanks thank you very much is there any other discussion seeing none will the clerk please call the roll for passage <coughs> Eleven eyes, one no. Motion passes. Next is other matters received after the agenda was posted. Turn it over to City Attorney Chuck Adams. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, 9.1 is a report of committee by the Public Safety Committee uh, who met and discussed a request for public safety consideration IFC by Fire Chief Romus to recommend that the Common Council authorize city staff to seek bids for Station 1 building repairs consistent with the adopted 2018 budget and recommends approval of the request. That will lie over. 9.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2017, June 30th, 2018, and June 30th, 2019. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 9.3 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Steve Westfall regarding parking signage on 8th Street between Michigan Avenue and Huron Avenue. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. <laughs>